So, you're thinking about applying to PhD programs. I was also there at one point, two years ago, questioning where I wanted to go after undergrad and what kinds of graduate programs I was interested in pursuing, if I even wanted to go into a graduate program, if I was gonna get my master's or my PhD, lots of questions to be answered. If you're looking for what to do before you even think about applying to any PhD programs, you've come to the right place. I was incredibly thorough when applying to and selecting PhD programs that I wanted to apply to and that led me to the PhD program that I'm in today which is objectively the best PhD program I could have chosen for what I was interested in. Some of the things that I did before applying to PhD programs I learned from other graduate students and were tips and tricks that my supervisor or um, other graduate students or friends passed down to me that I am now passing down to you guys so that you have these tips in mind before applying to any PhD PhD programs and I really had no idea what a PhD was. I didn't even know that a PhD or a higher degree after a master's existed until I came to college and I had no idea what it entailed. I had no idea how to apply. I didn't know anything about requirements, stipends, funding, supervisors, research, etc. But with the help of my supervisor, friends, and graduate students, I was able to figure it out and now I'm here today to pass all those tips on to you. So in this video, I'm going to tell you six things that you need to do before you even think about applying applying to any PhD program anywhere. And if you do all these six things, then I'm positive that you're going to get into a PhD program that you really, really love and hopefully you really like, or you'll go on your own path and find something else that you really enjoy. Also, I forgot to introduce myself. Hello everyone, I'm Maya. I'm obviously a PhD student. I'm also aware that not everyone has access to different resources that can help guide them through the PhD application process. So I'm here to give as many suggestions as I can in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. One of the first things that you need to do is ask yourself if you really want a PhD and if you really need a PhD. Higher education is great and all, but it's also very expensive. And although most PhD programs are partially or mostly fully funded, a lot of them aren't. Especially in the United States, PhD programs take a lot of time to complete, a lot of energy, a lot of research, and a lot of work. So you need to decide if that's something that you want to do for the most of your 20s. If the career or job that you want to attain requires that you have a PhD, then by all means, if that's what you want to do, get a PhD. However, if the job that you want doesn't necessarily require a PhD, then do not get a PhD. If you want to get a PhD for the prestige and to have a doctor in front of your name, then newsflash, you should not be getting a PhD. Oftentimes, the only thing you can rely on is your internal motivation to continue going if you're genuinely interested in what you're researching or studying. But if not, then you're going to hate the entire duration of your PhD and spend the years afterwards regretting even getting a PhD. Ugh, that's so horrible. I can't believe that happened. Okay, Bethany, I'm in the middle of something, so I have to go. All right, so now you've figured out whether you want to do a PhD or not. And so if you've considered all these factors and you still want to do a PhD, I'm going to tell you the two most important important things that matter when you're picking where to go to for your PhD. Your supervisor and the funding scheme that is available to you. I'll talk more about funding later, but for now, this tip is about supervisors. Your PhD supervisor is the most important thing that you need to think about when wanting to do a PhD. This is the person that you're going to be reporting to and working very closely with for the next three to seven to even eight years, depending on how long your program is. If you two don't get along or don't see eye to eye or have different fields of research, or different interests, then it's not gonna work. You need to thoroughly vet the person that is going to be your PhD supervisor because this is essentially your boss for the next couple of years and could potentially make or break your PhD. What you need to do is research all the people in your field, figure out which ones are professors or postdocs or whatever, figure out which ones are actually taking and accepting students and email them stating that you're interested in their research and you wanna work with them. Now this takes a lot of time, but if you've been reading papers and you're interested in research or if you've been kind of of looking around and networking with other people in your field, then you'll probably already have some familiar names to go off of and people that you know you should email because you're genuinely interested in their research. Not only should you find someone that's interested in your research, you need to find someone that is able and willing to take on PhD students and someone who has adequate funding schemes in place that can support you, your cost of living, and any research costs that your project is going to require. What I did before applying to any PhD programs is I made an Excel spreadsheet and yes, that's because 
Excel spreadsheets are just my love language at this point, of a list of all the potential supervisors that I wanted to work with. I included their emails, what university or affiliation they belong to, and their general research interests. Then I set about emailing all of these people. Now, when you're emailing your potential supervisors, I would stick to the more formal side of things. Do not just write an email like, hey, Dr. Blank, uh, are you taking on students? Because I'd be interested. Thanks, and then your name, and then send it, because most likely you're not going to get a response. You need to introduce yourself in the email as well as any research experience that you have, your research interests, any topics that you're interested in, and then you should also talk about their research and what about their research intrigues you. Listing a couple of their papers helps, if they developed new methods, talking about those methods in the papers help, or just anything about them that interests you. You need to tell them about you and why you would be a good PhD student to take on, and what about them intrigues you and why you think that they would be a good supervisor for you. Finally, make sure to ask them to see if they're actually taking on students because I did email a couple potential supervisors and actually found out that they weren't even taking students. So if I had applied to those programs and paid hundreds of dollars of application fees to apply to those programs only to realize that they weren't even taking students, I would have just wasted hundreds of dollars. After you've emailed them, give them a couple days or maybe a couple weeks and see if they respond. If they respond and if they seem enthusiastic and they say that they're able to take on students, then suggest having a Zoom meeting or if you guys live close to one another, having an in-person meeting. I think having meetings with potential supervisors before you commit to several years of research with them is incredibly important just to see how the dynamic between you two are and if you see yourself working with them long term. In this meeting, you should ask them what their supervisor style is like, if they're more hands-on or hands-off, the funding that's available to conduct your research, what facilities are there that you can do your research at, the nature of the program, all the graduate students in the program, the, the community that the program fosters, if any, and just get to know your supervisor's take on the university, the area, the field of research that they're doing, and the program in general. This will hopefully help you to get a better idea of what a potential relationship between you and your supervisor could look like in the future if you decided to continue working with them. Now that we've talked about supervisors, it's time to talk about the second most important thing when you're applying to PhD programs, money. I'm sorry to say it, but we don't live in a world where we have infinite funding to fund all the scientific projects and interests that you want to do your research in. Now there's several different pools of money that where your funding can come from, which include government grants, the university, private individuals that establish their own funding grants and services, funding schemes that your supervisor has procured for you and for students. But your job is to make sure that there is an adequate funding scheme for you in place so that when you go there, you don't have to take out loans and you're not struggling to get by because you can't pay your bills. If your supervisor is great but you have no funding, you're gonna find yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt by the time you get your PhD. And in this job market, you don't even know if you're gonna find a job that will allow you to pay those loans back in a timely fashion. So you need to make it your business to find a PhD program and a great supervisor that also has a reliable funding scheme in place so that you don't end up broke in the next couple of years. Now, obviously we're not talking like a huge salary or anything because we all know that PhD students aren't paid much, but it still needs to be a livable wage where you can live your life and not have to constantly stress and worry about paying rent or affording groceries. Do not be afraid to ask your supervisor about the details of your stipend. If they're a good supervisor, they will provide you with all the details about your stipend or they will direct you to someone that does. Any supervisor that shies away from questions like that or is offended that you would ask questions about money or funding or things like that is honestly a red flag. If they don't even have any resources to try to answer your questions, I would just personally slowly walk away. Because at the end of the day, these people are being paid adequately for their jobs, and so should you. Don't be afraid to ask what the general amount of the yearly stipend is. Make sure to ask if you get a stipend during the summer, because a lot of PhD students actually don't get summer stipends, which means that they basically have to fund themselves or take out loans or or get a job during the summer, but they're still expected to continue working on their PhD. Ask if your stipend is related to teaching or research. A lot of PhD stipends require that you teach so that you can get your stipend or that you are a research assistant for your professor or someone else in the department in order for you to receive your stipend. It's also important to check if the stipend is competitive or not. So some PhD programs have competitive funding where graduate students basically have to compete for funding. Now, I don't really prefer this method of funding just because I'm naturally not a very competitive person 
and the idea of competing with other graduate students for funding sounds like it would just create an incredibly toxic work environment. In fact, I've heard stories of PhD students sabotaging other students' projects so that they would be more competitive to receive funding from their university. These are all things that you should be thinking about because you may love your research, but do you love your research to go hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt for a PhD because the university or your supervisor wasn't able to support you financially? Check what the average cost of living is in the state or country that you're going to be living in. If the stipend that you're getting is below the cost of living, then you know that you're going to have to take out loans. Check the average cost of groceries in your state. Check the average cost of rent in your state. These are all things that you should be researching so you can estimate whether or not you need to take out loans or if the stipend that you will receive will be adequate enough for you to do your research and live at least a bit comfortably. If you're doing a more sciencey PhD, then you might need facilities to run or analyze your samples with or different pieces of equipment to do your research. If your university doesn't have that kind of equipment, then you will have to outsource that and find other universities that have the equipment and facilities that you need. But if your supervisor already has the equipment in their lab, that's a lot easier. Or if there are funding pools that you can apply for where you can get funding to use that equipment and those facilities, that's also great too. Because if you find a great supervisor and the stipend is also amazing, but you get there and they don't have any of the equipment or facilities that you need to conduct your research, then you're either going to have to apply for a ton of grants to get them on your own, or you might even have to change your project because you can't do it because your supervisor doesn't have access to the equipment that you need to conduct your research. So this is why, in my opinion, your relationship with your supervisor and money are the two most important things when pursuing a PhD. You may have already heard the phrase before that PhDs are supposed to be free, and technically they are. Most PhDs come with a funding scheme attached to them, whether it's partial or fully funded. Do not, and repeat after me, do not take on a PhD that has no funding available for you. It's not worth it folks, don't do it. Now the third thing that I think that is most important when thinking about pursuing a PhD is other graduate students. Other graduate students will honestly come to your rescue and save the day for you. Grad students are your friends, they're not your enemies, and you need to listen to any sorts of advice that they might give you. Besides emailing prospective supervisors from programs that you want to apply to, you should also be emailing graduate students in that program or graduate students that have left that program and already received their PhD from that university. If your prospective supervisor really likes you and needs to take on a student, they're obviously going to try to convince and persuade you to join the program and, you know, join the family, become one of their PhD students. But they don't truly have an idea of what that program is like for grad students because they're not a grad student at that program, they're a professor. The only people that can speak with experience about that program is other grad students at that university. I emailed a ton of grad students and asked them a lot of questions about whether they felt like their stipend was enough to afford the cost of living, if the graduate student community was welcoming there, how their supervisor was in general, their thoughts about the program, how they found the program, their career outlooks and prospects after they graduate. And honestly, some of the tea that these grad students spilt about the programs was boiling hot. If I hadn't emailed some of these grad students about the programs that I was interested in applying to, I probably would have wasted hundreds of dollars on programs that weren't worth my time or money. Some of the responses that I got from grad students about the programs and supervisors that I was thinking of applying to and working with made me genuinely want to nope out of ever thinking about applying for the programs that I was thinking about. Particularly if your potential supervisor has multiple grad students that they're advising right now, or grad students that have graduated and received their PhD, those are the ones in particular that you should be talking to because those are the ones that can tell you what your supervisor is actually like and can help you decide on whether or not that supervisor is a good match for you. Seriously, kudos to all the honest grad students out there. You guys have probably saved dozens of other potential students from applying to programs that maybe weren't their best match, maybe applying to a program that didn't offer the kind of funding that they needed, or made them realize that the supervisor wasn't the kind of supervisor they were looking for. Whatever the case, grad students are your friends, not your foes. Jesus, you scared me. And finally, my last tip for you guys is to tour the university or area that you're going to be living in long term and doing your PhD in. Now, I know in COVID times, this wasn't really possible, but now since the panorama is like starting to die down, it's more of a reality that you can actually visit the places that you're going to be doing your PhD in. Just like how you tour a college before spending the next four years of your life doing your undergrad there, you should also tour the place that you're going to be getting your PhD in because you're going to be spending the next four to six years of your life living there. And if it's a miserable place, 
race that you despise, then that's a huge problem. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If any grad students, past or present, have any other suggestions to add, please let me know in the comments down below. I think that'd be helpful to everyone involved. A PhD can be a lot of hard work with little to no pay, and it can be very difficult and stressful at times. But at the end of the day, if you love your research and you love the idea of creating your own original work and you enjoy writing, then it might just be for you. But don't feel pressured to do it because you want that title or you want the prestige or the respect that comes with getting a PhD. I know that I made the right choice by pursuing a PhD and I know that the program that I'm at right now is the best program that I could have chosen for me and I'm perfectly happy with my choice and have no regrets. At the end of the day, all that matters is how you feel about your choices and your own personal career paths. In the words of a wise prophet, YOLO, you only live once. So do something that you actually enjoy instead of doing something for prestige or success or money or respect. Because you may get that title, but you're not gonna get that time and money back. Oh, how easy would it be to just be a simple gorilla living in a jungle with the only worry in its life being which patch of grass it's going to eat next. To our detriment, evolution has molded our brains into the crinkly, craggly rocks that they are now instead of the smooth brain pebbles that they were millions of years ago. And whether you think that that's a pro or a con is completely up for you to decide. Anyways, Harambe and I are going to beat our chests and howl at the full moon because that's just what you do when mating season is approaching and you've got to let the other females know that you are an alpha male who is single and available. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. If you're interested in my content and want to see more, please consider subscribing and follow my Instagram if you'd like more updates on the kinds of videos that I plan on making next. And I'll see you guys very soon with another video. Bye!